Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this shadow box gift box to hold one of the Bath & Body Works hand creams. I love how this box turned out. This is the landscape version and I also have this horizontal version so you can decide which direction you want it. But I'm gonna go ahead and make this version for you today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with a piece of old olive cardstock that measures seven and three quarters inches by 10 and three quarters inches. And on all four sides, we're gonna score this at three eighths, one and three eighths, one and three quarters, and two and three quarters. And we'll do that on all four sides. Okay, now that that's done, on the short side, so the seven and three quarter inch side, we wanna score this at three and one eighth, but only down to the second score line. So three and one eighth, and four and five eighths. Again, stopping at that second score line. I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. We're gonna repeat the same thing. So three and one eighth, four and five eighths. Again, stopping at that second horizontal score line. Then I'm gonna rotate it to the long side or the 10 and three quarter inch side and we're gonna score this at two and a quarter down to the fourth horizontal score line and eight and a half, again, down to the fourth horizontal score line. I'm gonna rotate at 180 and do the same thing, so two and a quarter, down to the fourth line, and eight and a half, down to the fourth line. Okay, all the scoring is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all of the score lines that go all the way across the cardstock. Okay, now that that's done, I wanna show you a little template here. Let me turn it this way so it's easier to see. Now there is some rhyme or reason to why we made these short score lines. I'm gonna have you turn it long ways. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up this score line and this score line. So on either side, we're gonna be creating these little tabs. And I'm gonna do those parts first. So let me just walk you through the one side. So again, we're gonna cut up these vertical score lines. And we're actually going one, two, three, four horizontal lines up. Again, I'll do the next one to the right. And what we're gonna do is remove this whole corner section here. And what I like to do is just come in here. This is the last score line here before we get to this big section. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and remove this whole corner piece. Then we're gonna cut on that little short score line we made but didn't burnish and that's gonna create one of our tabs, like so. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same thing on this side. So cut up these vertical score lines, stopping at the fourth horizontal on either side of that little tab that we wanna create. Then we'll remove this corner section here and then cut here on the score line that we did not burnish and that creates that tab. Now the next thing we're gonna do is cut up these short score lines here, I'm cutting up here and here, that we didn't burnish. And then what I'm gonna do is cut from this score line here on the diagonal to where we made that cut. And that's gonna create that nice little angled section that's gonna make it look like a picture frame when it's put together. Do the same thing on the opposite side, again, cutting from score line at the diagonal to create something that looks like that. Now the last thing we'll do on this side is I'm just gonna notch in these tabs like so. So that side is done, okay? I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. All right, so now all the cutting's been done. We'll just hold it up against the template. There will be a picture of this up on my detailed blog post. And there we go, okay? So now what we're gonna do is to get this box ready to put together. And the first thing I'm gonna do is apply tear and tape adhesive to all of these outside 3 eighths of an inch sections, as well as the four tabs. And as I'm doing that, I want to make sure my tear and tape is up close to the score line edge. Thank you. 
Okay, so there's where we place the tear and tape, all four tabs, all four outer edges. Then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put a little tiny strip of tear and tape right there on those diagonal sections. Just a small piece and we'll do that to all four of the diagonals. Like so. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna start with the long edges first. I'm just gonna grab my paper piercing tool to remove the backing off that tear and tape. I'm going to flip it over again. So what I'm going to do is fold on that first score line and then on the third score line and then we can press that down flat. And that's going to go right where we want it to go using the score lines to square up that side of the box. Do the same thing to the opposite side again, folding on that first score line and third score line and pressing down flat. All right, so those are going to be the sides and they're right where we want them to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off the rest of the tear and tape. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Now what we're going to do is first start on each of these tabs. So I'm going to meet up this cut line with this score line to square up that box corner. And we're going to do that to all four corners. And by having those tabs, it gives those corners some great strength and structure to this box. Now, the last thing we have to do is to fold these sides in. So I'm going to take this cut edge and kind of push it to the inside back of the box before I press it down and just kind of roll it into place. As I press this into place, I'm going to square up the corner and kind of press down to catch that tear and tape we put on those diagonal sections. We do that to all four corners. So that side is done. We're going to do the same thing over here. Take your time. And there is our shadow box. It's very sturdy and a great way to give a gift. So let's go ahead and put in our hand cream. And that's a perfect fit there. Okay, now let's go ahead and make a little belly band. So I've opted for a full belly band and this one measures seven inches by five and five sixteenths. And that's to make sure that it fits completely over the box. You're gonna wanna use your Stampin' Trimmer or a tool where you can score on the 16th inch measurements. And you want to score along the seven inch side. We're gonna score this at one and a half inches, two and a half inches, four and 13 sixteenths, which is one tick mark past four and three quarters, and five and 13 sixteenths. Again, one tick mark past five and three quarters. Okay, we're gonna fold and burnish on all those score lines. And then there's one section that is slightly narrower than the opposite section, and that's the one, the smaller section, that I'm gonna place a strip of tear and tape right along the edge. All right, now bringing in the box, I'm just gonna dry fit this and just make sure that it fits okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tear and tape. And then I'm wrapping this belly band somewhat snug, but not too tight, because we wanna make sure that we can slide the belly band on and off press that into place and then we'll just slide it back and forth a few times to kind of break it in and it'll be a perfect fit. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. We're gonna use the Farmhouse Christmas Bundle. I love this stamp set, especially the sentiment stamp sets. We're gonna use this Wishing You a Season Full of Peace, Wonder, and Love, Merry Christmas. And then the Coordinating Die Set. And ahead of time, I stamped this sentiment in Old Olive on Whisper White. And then I cut out just the Merry Christmas using this really pretty stitched banner die. Then I'm gonna take a scrap piece of old olive cardstock and stamp the sentiment. We're gonna punch that out using the two inch circle punch. You will cut off a little bit of the Christmas name, but we're gonna cover that with the banner. Then using the two and a quarter inch circle, I'm gonna punch a circle out of early espresso. I'm first gonna glue the two circles together. Then I'm gonna glue the sentiment on top. And we're gonna to pop that up 
has a few dimensionals. I'm going to place that right in the center. And then I'm going to add a little ribbon bow using silver metallic edge ribbon. We'll just stick a couple of glue dots to the back of that ribbon. And then we'll place that on the front here at an angle. And voila, there is our Bath & Body Works Hand Cream Shadow Box gift box. Perfect for giving these at the holidays. You can change it up for any occasion. You can even write a little Christmas check in there and fold it and put it under the hand cream. So very sweet gift to give these holidays. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my monthly newsletter as well as my daily blog updates, and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in earning a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies. And you can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you give this project a try, I'd love to see it. Feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag Paper Pixie. You can certainly email it to me or send it to me via Facebook Messenger. I'd love to see what you come up with. So thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.